Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, we have an awesome program for you. Welcome to the College Admissions Collaborative Highlighting Engineering and Technology, the Virtual College Fair. We have a great presentation for you. Uh, just some housekeeping items before we get started. Number one, this is a webinar. Your cameras and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. Um, there are more sessions, so if you are really interested in hearing from other institutions after this session, there are two more hours worth of sessions. Um, and this is being recorded, and so you will be able to hear the playback of this um, at strivescan.com slash C-A-C-H-E-T. And most importantly, we know you're going to have some questions. So at any time during the presentation, you're welcome to put those questions in the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. Um, just make sure that you uh, are asking your question clearly so our panelists are able to answer appropriately. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over. Welcome to hearing about Boston University. Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to the event. It's nice to see so many folks uh, joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Bodie Wilson. I am an associate director uh, at Boston University in the admissions office. A uh, member of our board of admissions. I am also an alum. I studied economics at BU. So, uh, you know, not particularly STEM focused, but like at the very least, there's a lot of math. So I guess like I have the, the M covered anyway. And uh, just in case anyone is curious, uh, no, this is not a Zoom ba uh, background. I am in my backyard. So, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the elements are, uh, are a part of the presentation tonight. So hopefully uh, things come through kind of loud and clear. Uh, I'm joined tonight uh, by Dan Tversky, uh, Assistant Director of Undergraduate Programs in our College of Engineering, as well as Michelle Sherman, our Director of Pre-Health Programs, uh, who will both be telling you a bit about their respective areas today. I'm also joined by my colleague, Sarah Toledo, who is helping out behind the scenes with tech stuff, and she's answering some of your questions in the Q&A, which reminds me, if you have questions for me or for our panel, feel free to enter them in the Q&A at the bottom of the Zoom window. We'll leave plenty of time for questions later in the presentation, so you can either save your questions for them or just queue them up now. Sarah's happy to, uh, to get started answering them uh, right now, uh, or we can pitch them to the, uh, to the panel. Uh, today, I'll start with about a 10-minute summary of what makes BU special for research and study, particularly as it concerns STEM tracks. I'll then kick things over to Dan and Michelle for their presentations, and then we'll take questions as a group. Make sense? Awesome. Now, bear with me for one second while I share my screen. And there we go. Now, Boston University is a large urban private school teaching and research in nature built on a strong foundation of liberal arts study. We host 16,000 undergraduate students in total from all 50 U.S. states and over 100 countries around the world. Uh, those students are studying among our 300 different programs housed in our 10 undergraduate schools and colleges, which are arranged geographically along a mile and a quarter of Commonwealth Avenue in Boston. Through the BU Hub, our general education program, students are able to explore a broad array of topics while building skills in fundamental intellectual capacities to help them become better thinkers, scholars, and citizens. While you're likely here today because you're interested in health science or maybe computer science or engineering or our seven-year accelerated medical program, you can absolutely take classes outside of those fields as well. That academic flexibility is one of the hallmarks of BU's academics, and it absolutely extends to full programs. Fully three quarters, 75% of our students carry some kind of double program, whether that's a major with a minor or a full double major. As a teaching and research institution, that spirit of discovery uh, fostered by our academic flexibility is on display every single day. In 2019, we invested over $550 million in research funding across the university. That research included projects uh, like that run by Professor Willenius in our School of Public Health, which looked at Google data to determine policies to best promote social distancing in the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, or our NEIDL lab, which received nearly $2 million in additional funding for working with live copies of the coronavirus. 
our faculty at the undergraduate level is a pretty impressive group of people boasting MacArthur Fellows, Fulbright Scholars, members of the Academy of Arts and Sciences, and many others who have received some of their field's highest honors. Even given that fact, they're very accessible to you as students. Our average class size across the university is 27, and our student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1. You'll find opportunities to connect with faculty inside the classroom and outside at every turn. Now, this has been a lot so far about the work that our students and faculty accomplish, but there's so much more about the experience that is uniquely BU. For starters, the campus itself, which we will eventually get back to in person at some point, very excited about this. As I mentioned earlier, we occupy basically a straight line along a mile and a quarter of Commonwealth Avenue in Boston. We're about a 10 minute walk from Fenway Park and about 15 minutes by train to the Boston Common downtown. Boston itself, it's a pretty incredible place to be a student, hosting as it does over 300,000 college students each year. The city is basically tailor-made for you with enough restaurants and parks and concert venues and museums to keep you busy during your years with us. Now I should stress at this point that while we are very much an urban space, we're also a campus. We require that all of our students live on campus during their freshman year, and then we guarantee housing for all four years of your undergraduate experience. In a city like Boston, this is a pretty special benefit. About 75 to 80 percent of our students take us up on this, living in BU housing for their full time as undergraduate students. This lends us a very close knit campus feel, which informs basically every aspect of student life. That student life includes nearly 500 clubs and organizations. That includes sports. D1 at the varsity level, but of course, club and intramurals also available. Uh, if anyone is curious, and you may not be, I played intramural softball at BU. Uh, in the two years I was on the team, we won exactly one game, which maybe gives some indication of like, you know, my elite skills on a softball field. Uh, there's also Greek life, cultural organizations, uh, faith-based groups, not one, not two, but 12 acapella ensembles, and a number of other artistic groups. Uh, over 1 million hours of community service are pledged uh, to the city of Boston. Those connections to the city and that close-knit campus also open the door to a number of different professional opportunities outside of the classroom. BU offers several programs to encourage innovation and career exploration under our Innovate at BU initiative and our Center for Career Development. U.S. News and World Report ranked us 27th on their most innovative universities list, spurred no doubt by such resources as the Build Lab, which is our on-campus collaboration space and information center, or BU Spark, a computer science and engineering focused technology incubator and experiential learning lab. Another major avenue toward professional opportunities at BU is internships, with 90% of our students completing at least one before they graduate. That firsthand experience in a professional field directly contributes to high job placement rates among our graduates with 95% of them in a job or grad school within six months of leaving the university. Internships can be completed on our campus, in Boston or around the United States, or internationally as part of one of our study abroad programs. With over 80 programs in 30 cities around the world, BU Study Abroad offers options for virtually all majors to complete internships, take classes, and engage in research in an international setting. It's one of the major ways that our students are able to gain uh, a truly global perspective through their experiences at BU. So with all that in mind, I speak very quickly. There's a lot of content here, I understand. Uh, I'd like to turn things over to uh, Dan Tabersky uh, to give you some sense of uh, uh, you know, research opportunities and uh, uh, other offerings in our College of Engineering. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Bodhi. All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Dan Taberski. I'm the Assistant Director for Undergraduate Programs in the College of Engineering at Boston University. Um, I've got some slides that I'm gonna kind of go through here that I'm gonna talk about um, uh, the curriculum, various majors and opportunities that you could uh, check out um, at the College of Engineering. Uh, Bodhi, if you could advance for me. So at the College of Engineering, we have um, three different departments, a biomedical engineering department, electrical and computer engineering department, and mechanical engineering department. And those three departments offer us four majors. 
biomedical in the biomedical engineering department, computer and electrical engineering in the ECE department, and then mechanical engineering in the mechanical engineering department. And then mechanical engineering um, has a specific uh, concentration that uh, only mechanical engineers uh, can um, can take up, which is a, a concentration in aerospace. But there are also a number of other concentrations um, that all majors uh, can take part in, energy tech and manufacturing, nanotech, tech innovation, and the NAE Grand Challenges program. So all of these um, can give you a way to sort of add um, a value or a focus to that major program that you find inter uh, interesting. And um, then um, in, uh, in the entire curriculum, if you could advance once more, Bodhi, um, uh, we have worked uh, um, data science and machine learning into the uh, curriculum um, woven throughout all disciplines because it's the, the, the coming future for us is, is a, a, a data driven society and you need to be able to interact with that. And I should also say that while we have these uh, concentrations that all the majors can, can do, there's also a number of other minors that you can take up, including any of the other uh, engineering majors you can minor in and then some, some other offshoots, as well as uh, you can minor in any other minor that's offered at Boston University and any of the other schools and colleges. So if you are interested in film or in the College of Communications or business in the Questrom School of Business, that is something that, that you can take advantage of. And uh, Bodhi, if you could advance once more. I wanna just highlight uh, sort of the first two years of our curriculum for you. Um, you'll see along the left-hand column that all of our engineers um, will uh, will do four semesters of calculus. Um, everybody will also do um, at least one semester of general chemistry um, and two semesters of physics. Biomedical engineers, you're going to do two semesters of chemistry because you're gluttons for punishment. Um, and then, um, Bodhi, if you could advance one, uh, just I want to highlight the sort of engineering core curriculum. You'll note that all engineers, all of those majors, everyone's going to take um, courses like mechanics and circuits and programming. So um, if you are a biomedical engineer, we're gonna make you take some, some programming. Or if you are a, um, a mechanical engineer, we're gonna make you take circuits. And we do that for a couple of, of reasons. One is that we, would, we want you to be conversant um, in all of the various, uh, all of various components that are engineering, you're going to find yourself in the classroom and later on in the boardroom, um, not in just the room with people who majored in your engineering function. So you need to be able to speak the language um, that all the other engineers do. You need to be able to talk programming with the computer engineers if you're a mechanical engineer, or you need to be able to talk mechanics if you're an electrical engineer. Um, and the other thing that we do with building our curriculum in this way um, is that uh, I, I've, you know, I mentioned the four majors. There's in fact the fifth major that you can come in to the College of Engineering in, and that is undeclared. Um, Any time in your first two years, you can switch your majors. So that means that um, should you get into your your second sem your first semester of your sophomore year, or second semester of your sophomore year, and decide, you know, in fact, um, the track I'm on isn't where I want to be. I want to be uh, an electrical engineer. Unless you don't need to start over. You know, you write what you've taken thus far will apply into the major programs of all of the other majors. Um, <clears throat> so you can move around seamlessly as you take classes and sort of discover. And then, uh, Bodhi, if you could advance one last time for me, I just want to highlight that uh, built into our engineering curriculum are the various general education, the BU hub, our general education program for the entire university. We've built that in to your schedule so that you'll have time for it, but also so that you can explore classes outside of engineering. Every semester, you're not just in the lab or in the math classroom um, doing problem sets. We're also setting it up so you can study other things and, and, and learn um, all the other stuff that, that you can get at an enormous university uh, that with an uh, enormous opportunities at Boston University. That's it for me, and I'll, uh, I'll look forward to answering questions uh, as we go on.
Awesome. Thank you, Dan. And uh, now it's time to hear from uh, Michelle Sherman uh, in our uh, pre health department. Okay. Hi, I'm my name is Michelle Sherman. I am the director of free health advising here at Boston University. And I would just like to talk to you a little bit about what that means. Um, at BU, it, uh, oh, actually, do you mind advancing slides? Sorry, thank you. So at BU, uh, being pre health is not an official major. You can be a pre health student and pursue any major, which is great. So if you're interested in engineering or if you're interested in any field, even in the humanities, something like that. Um, I know this is a STEM sort of geared webinar, but you can major in anything and be pre-health. I also want you to be aware that at BU, we advise for a variety of professions. And so here on this slide, you can see we have medical, but we also advise applicants and students interested in other professions like dentistry, veterinary medicine, physician assistant, that is becoming more and more popular, nursing, podiatry, pharmacy, really anything that you can think of. So when you get here, you would apply to you know, any school or college that you're interested in and pursue any major. And then the pre-health advisors are here to really help you think about how can I fit in my pre-health curriculum um, in addition to whatever your major requirements will be. So we meet with our students on a regular basis. We like to meet with you at least once a semester to kind of help make sure that you're staying on track and then also help you think about all the different things um, that you can be taking advantage of outside of the classroom that Bodhi already has already um, mentioned. But the prerequisites can differ by profession. So the medical schools have pretty consistent requirements across the board, but the dental schools have slightly different requirements. Physician assistant schools have all sorts of different requirements. So we're here to help you make sure that you're on track with your major requirements, as well as whichever um, pre-health curriculum you will be following while you're here. Um, some core requirements that are pretty consistent, though, across the board is that you will have to take some um, some semesters of biology, chemistry, physics, and math, but how many and which types of each of those courses does depend on the profession, but that is what we're here to help you figure out and make sure that you're staying on track with everything. So I think we can advance to the next slide. So as I mentioned, curriculum planning is one of the many things that we're here and available to meet with students about. But I also mentioned that we're here to help you think about how to take advantage of some of these things outside of the classroom. So for anyone interested in pursuing a health profession, it's really important to have a well-rounded portfolio. This means strong academics, but it also means um, taking advantage of things like study abroad, joining student organizations, being an engaged member of the community, um, participating in social community service activities. As I'm sure you can imagine, clinical experience is also really important. And so we have a lot of resources to really help you um, think about and explore what areas of these health professions you might be interested in and, and how you can take advantage of that here in Boston being a healthcare hub. Um, we are also available to the applicants when it comes time for you to be applying to these health profession schools. That usually doesn't happen until your junior year, but we are available to help our applicants through the application process. That includes things like um, thinking about who to ask for letters of recommendation, how to you know, write a personal statement, which schools to even select to apply to, all of those sorts of things. So we're here to help you throughout the entire application process um, and really help you be reflecting on your experiences as you go so you can be thoughtful and purposeful about building a portfolio um, so that you can really demonstrate to these health profession schools who you are as an individual and what it is you want to accomplish. So we can advance to the next slide. So we do have a couple of early assurance programs that I want to make you aware of. Some of you may already be familiar with these, but I'm going to briefly go over both of these programs. So the first is the seven year liberal arts medical education program, also known as the SMED program. This is an early assurance program that is only available to incoming freshmen. It is accelerated. So it is a three plus four year program. You do three years at the undergraduate campus and then four years at the medical school. This is an extremely rigorous program, and it is one of the most competitive programs at the undergraduate level here um, at the institution. I think that in this past cycle, um, we had over 1,400 applications to that program, and we interviewed 
about 78 candidates. So it is extremely rigorous. Um, we are looking for individuals who have a very strong academic performance in high school because of the rigor of this program. We want to make sure that you're going to be able to handle the coursework that will be required of you. We also are really looking for these things outside of the classroom. Clinical experience is absolutely critical and it really is non-negotiable. If you haven't had clinical experience, it would be extremely unlikely that you would be invited to interview. So if you're interested in that program, I strongly encourage you to be thinking about building clinical experience, which I also recognize is challenging right now due to the fact that we're in a pandemic and a lot of places are not accepting volunteers. Um, but there are there are some opportunities, so I'm happy to answer any questions about that. And then finally, the uh, modular medical and dental integrated curriculum, which is another early assurance program. However, this is a four plus four year curriculum. So you do a traditional four years at the undergrad institution and then a four years at either the medical school or dental school, depending on which track you decide to pursue. This program is only available to current BU students. So you can apply to BU and pursue any major. Um, you just have to have the prerequisites to be able to apply. Same with this med program. There are some um, science prerequisites that are required. And this is something that you apply to in your sophomore year. So you'll take the prerequisites your freshman and sophomore year, and then you would apply in the spring semester of your sophomore year. This program has many fewer applicants because it's only available to BU students. So to give you an example, this past cycle, we had about 79 applications to this program that includes med and dental. And we will interview roughly 31 candidates for this program. So in, in both of these programs, we are looking for candidates that have strong academic performance and are also looking for candidates who have this clinical experience outside of the classroom that we're really looking for. That's going to be important for either of these programs. The students in the, interested in what we refer to as the emetic program, one of the benefits is that you would be able to have access to advisors in the pre-professional advising office to help make sure that you are building a really well-rounded portfolio and a competitive portfolio so that you, you will be considered um, in that application cycle. So I think other than, you know, some of these other things that we, I have on this slide, you know, of course, the clinical experience, but then we're looking for other personal qualities for, for both of these programs, individuals that demonstrate high levels of maturity, leadership, compassion, and really also have explored and can speak to their interest in, you know, attending our school of medicine and our school of dental medicine. So it's really important to also kind of do your research about our professional schools so that you can articulate in your application why you're a good fit for these programs. So I think that that's all I have to say for the pre-health track for now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michelle. Uh, so at this point, uh, I would love to uh, uh, to invite uh, Dan and Michelle to uh, answer your questions. Um, I do see that there are a couple uh, of questions that have come through in the Q&A, uh, but uh, whatever questions you might have, whatever's on your mind, uh, absolutely uh, throw in the Q&A. We are uh, happy to, uh, to respond to them. Uh, and it looks like there's um, a couple of things on folks' minds. Uh, the first one that I'll pitch to, uh, to both Dan and Michelle uh, relates to academic flexibility. Uh, both of you touched a little bit on uh, this topic that uh, the um, range of majors for pre-health is uh, pretty vast across the university. Uh, Dan, with engineering, you talked about uh, being able to study outside of the College of Engineering. Uh, so um, I guess I'm curious about uh, if there are limits to that. Like, can students double major in engineering? Um, are, uh, what are the opportunities for uh, exploring broad ranges of academic uh, uh, subjects within pre-health as well. Um, so uh, I'll start with that. Um, yes, uh, there are any number of ways that you can uh, engage with the rest of the programs at Boston University. Um, you can um, double major um, in any of the other majors that we have within the college. We have uh, built-in programs to help you do that in the, in the most efficient way possible. Um, also at Boston University, there is a program uh, that's referred to as dual degree in which you can, com you can complete um, not only your, say, degree, your uh, Bachelor of Science in the College of Engineering, but you can also complete all of the requirements for um, a second degree in one of the other schools or colleges at Boston University. So you could get a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering and get a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics in the College of Arts and Sciences. 
or um, health and human uh, or uh, human phys in the Sargent uh, School of, of Health and uh, Human Re Rehabilitation. So um, I always say the answer is, is yes, but like you can do it all. You can do all these things. You can get multiple degrees. Um, the question is, how do we fit it? Um, did you come in with some AP credits? Did you do some pre-college wor work at a local college or university that gave you a little flexibility? Are you willing to stay and do a little work in summer or to overload in a given semester? And we have advisors like myself um, who are there to work you through about what's going to work for you. Um, for some people, a double major is a great idea. For other people, maybe just doing just doing a minor um, uh, where you, you learn some something about another discipline, get some, some guided um, education in another discipline, but allow yourself some flexibility to just take some other classes um, in some of the other schools and colleges because you're at a school with a world-class arts program and you always wanted to take painting and have it um, directed by a, uh, you know, uh, someone who teaches painting at the collegiate level. So. Um, there's any number of ways for you to branch out and take advantage of the different programs. And so, Michelle, yeah, first, sorry quickly. for turning my... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I was going to say sorry for turning my video off. My dogs, um, yes, we're barking in the background, so I'm trying to <laughs> avoid that. Um, so I, I will reiterate everything that Dan says. I think for, for pre-health students, um, Yes, I mean, anything can be possible. It, it does have to do a little bit with like your application timeline. Um, so if you are flexible, if you're open to taking what we um, talk about a lot in our office, gap years or glide years, they're called different things, but that means not necessarily trying to apply to enter health profession school immediately after. Um, you graduate if you're going through the traditional path. This is not the case if you're interested in either of the early assurance programs. But if you're a traditional pre-health student um, and you're open to that, then you have a lot more flexibility and there's a lot you can accomplish. And we really encourage you to do that. We encourage our students to, to really consider taking their time, you know, getting everything accomplished that they want to get accomplished. BU has so many amazing things to offer. If you want to double major, you should double major. But if your timeline for application is not as not super flexible, then it in the it will probably require you to make some decisions. Um, and so maybe instead of double majoring, you do a major and a minor, because it also depends on the majors that you choose and the health profession that you choose um, to make sure that you can graduate on time, you know, in those, in those four years. Um, but there are definitely a lot of opportunities and we would encourage you to take your time and take advantage of all those things. So yes, double majoring, it can be possible. Majoring or minoring can be possible, but there's also other ways to pursue an interest, even if you couldn't do a double major, like say it doesn't fit in to your schedule because you are pre-med and you're an engineering um, student. You could you know, pursue things like a research project or the Innovate at BU. There's a lot of ways to incorporate your interests um, through research or other kind of extracurricular activities that don't require you to kind of get a degree at the end. So there, if you want to do it, there's usually a way for it to happen, but we might have to just kind of creative, get creative to help you figure out how you can accomplish everything that you want to accomplish. Thank you for that. This, uh, this is a super ambitious group that we're talking to, so I appreciate the uh, uh, the insight into how they can achieve uh, a lot of their different goals. Uh, now, a specific question that was in the chat along these lines is, uh, if I'm interested in two different things, I want to study two different majors, which one do I actually apply to? Now, I know like what my answer is. I kind of uh, will generally counsel students that, that there's one or the other, uh, you know, ultimately in our application uh, review process, uh, we don't generally, you know, advise students toward one or the other uh, for the most part. We really leave this up to you. What are your personal interests? What's the one you'd like to jump into? Uh, I know that uh, I will often advise students uh, as well well, if there's like a couple of things that you feel pretty equal about, you're ambivalent about, uh, you know, maybe start out, uh, it's a better idea to maybe start out in the one that's a little bit more um, rigidly structured so that you can start taking care of some, uh, uh, some requirements right away uh, and then jump into the, uh, the other major uh, during uh, their, your sophomore year. Uh, now that I've said that, uh, Dan and Michelle, uh, do you, uh, uh, am I completely off base here? Uh, are there other ways that you would advise students to kind of pick which one to start out? 
Um, no, I, I think you're, you're, you're spot on. Um, uh, I mean, I, I'm always, you know, I'm hopeless romantic when it comes to advising, I suppose, which is, you know, to, to follow your heart. So if there's something that you, that you truly are a little bit more passionate about, follow that because it's, it's always going to be pulling at your brain. Um, and, and, you know, as far as at, at BU, I would say that, you know, as I explained, you can, you can move about um, the College of Engineering into other majors, you can move about the university into other schools or colleges. Um, in, in, in most cases, there's a simple gateway course uh, that sort of unlocks the other school or a major, and, and those gateway courses are always a requirement uh, for a major or a minor, so you're not wasting anything by exploring and trying. So you can pretty safely go into a program at BU and decide, you know what, it's not where my heart lies. My heart lies over here. Um, and you can follow that um, and you can move and still graduate in four years. It takes planning and you gotta let people know early if you feel like you wanna slide one way or the other, um, but you, you can absolutely move about. Um, and I, I know students um, who, who have started engineering and gone off to, to, to like literally gone off to theater or places where you're like, how are you? You're an engineer, why are you going off to, because that, that's where their heart lay. Um, and they graduated in four years and, and, and students who started out um, in the college communications and, and made the transition um, into engineering and, and finished their degree. So there's, there's time for you to explore, even if you kind of commit to one thing early. Yeah, I mean, I, I second that. I think um, it is very easy for students to kind of move around the university if you feel like your heart is leading you somewhere now, but then you get here and you decide, oh, wait a minute, I think I might like this thing instead. Um, this happens all the time. As, in, in my office, I mean, we advise students in any undergraduate school or college and they're moving around all the time. I mean, I feel like what is the statistic? Like 80% of, of students change their major like at least one time while they're here. So this is a pretty um, popular kind of thing to do and it's okay to do. It's hard when you're in high school and you sort of have this limited view of what's gonna be available to you. And then you come to a place like Boston University that has majors and minors and classes that like you didn't even know that was a thing that existed <laughs> until you get here. So, um, you know, it's okay to kind of go with your gut or go with your heart um, for now. And, and I think it is somewhat um, relieving to know that you do have an opportunity that if the wind changes for you, that you can pursue whatever it is that you are becoming more interested in as time goes on. But again, I, I do have to give a shout out to all of our other kind of extracurricular things outside of the classroom, because sometimes students feel like they have this really, really strong passion, but then they start taking classes and they're like, eh, I don't know if I love that so much, but I kind of still like parts of it. Um, so those are good ways, like get involved in a student organization on campus. And so you can kind of explain explore the areas of that interest that you have, but then change your major to something else that you feel like you're going to enjoy more. Or if you really like engineering, but you really like dance, you can join a dance team at the university. I mean, there's just so many different ways for you to incorporate your interest here. And that's definitely one of the, the benefits of coming to a large institution like Boston University is that you can pretty much do anything that you want, um, whether it's on campus or within the local community. And then if there isn't a student group that exists, you can kind of create your own. So um, I think, yeah. Awesome. It's a great reminder that uh, like, you know, more than just a collection of classrooms, like an actual like, you know, community, uh, many different ways for students to uh, explore their interests. Uh, so a couple of uh, what I think are probably pretty quick questions here. This first one is for uh, Michelle. Uh, what majors can students pursue uh, if they're interested in the emetic program? Uh, specifically to this question, does biomedical engineering work? Sorry, I don't know why I was not able to unmute right then. That was weird. Um, so yes, you can. Um, you can major in whatever you want and pursue the MEDIC program. And we do have students in the engineering um, in, in engineering who are in the MEDIC program now. Um, we usually have at least a couple students um, in the in the MEDIC program who are completing engineering. Biomedical engineering is the most popular. I think that's probably pretty self-explanatory, um, but that tends to be the most popular engineering major. 
um, to pursue. And that's totally fine. You can do that. Dan is a, an excellent advisor and can help you. And I know the engineering team is, is great and they, they can help students make sure that they're um, fulfilling the prerequisites. And for engineering students, that's most um, commonly just the general chemistry and organic chemistry, which you would take in the first couple of years. And then the engineering curriculum satisfies the other prerequisite requirements. Awesome. And Dan, uh, when students apply to the College of Engineering, uh, they have the option to come into engineering undeclared. So what does that uh, first year or two look like for an undeclared student? Um, as an undeclared student, um, you are going to, the first question I'm going to ask to an undeclared student is like, are you bio, do you think you want to be biomedical engineering or do you think it might be one of the others, right? Because that's just sort of the difference of a, a specific chemistry course that you might take. Um, and if you're like, I really don't know, well, the, the general chem course that you take for biomedical engineering applies to all the other majors. So it's not even a big deal there. But, um, you know, as I was, I was kind of showing in my slide earlier, like the first two years, you're taking a lot of the same courses um, that all the other majors, majors are taking. So um, your first two years are exploratory um, if you come in as undeclared in, in that you are going to take courses that are going to kind of point you in one engineering direction or another. Um, changing your major is as simple as pressing a button on a website. It is so easy to do, um, and I know no students um, to to the to the detriment of me pulling my hair out who have uh, been one major in one week and come back the next and was like I changed and now I'm mechanical and I changed and now I'm elect electrical. So they they've switched a bunch and it's super easy and it's um it's whatever works for you to get. Uh, to get to where you feel comfortable. Some people um, really want to have a major because they feel being undeclared, they, they feel untethered. And other people really like being undeclared because they're sort of like being honest about, I just don't know wh where I want to be. And, and our process is whatever works for you as a student, um, we, we, we will have, we, we know you're going to figure out what you want your major to be in, that for, in those first two years. Um, and and from there, once you decide it, it's it's a seamless transition into the upper level courses that 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 drill down into where you want to focus and what you want to do for a concentration, if that's the kind of thing that you want to pursue. As someone who uh, changed his major twice as a student at BU, yeah, it's way too easy to change your major. You need to show some discipline when, uh, when you're thinking about your program. Uh, now, I think this may actually end up being our last question, but it's just, it's too good to, to kind of pass up. It's one I'm super curious about myself. Uh, and it relates to how the pandemic has uh, impacted uh, a lot of the opportunities at the university. So Michelle, I'll start with you. Uh, like how are students fulfilling uh, clinical requirements uh, uh, in a COVID uh, kind of environment? Uh, and then onto Dan, like are there still research uh, opportunities available for students? Yeah, that's a valid question. Um, I mean, so it's been a year, right? It's been a year. Um, and in full candor, you know, the clinical experiences have been limited. Obviously, at the beginning of the pandemic, everything was shut down for good reason, because we want to make sure that everyone is safe. Um, and there were a lot of moving pieces. So in at least in the first couple months, sort of through the summer, it was particularly challenging. But it also was OK, because everyone was really figure, trying to figure out, OK, what are we even doing now? We have to convert everything to this virtual world. So it was, it was a learning process for everyone. Um, I will say, though, that our students um, have been very creative and have been getting various types of clinical experience. I also think that this is somewhat of a personal choice or a family choice, because for some of our students, you know, if they're living or they themselves are an at risk population, it's, you know, that's a choice that that has to be made with that student and the family to make sure that everyone's feeling safe. Is this okay for this person to get into a clinical setting or not? Um, but our students have been able to to be creative. Research opportunities have still been available, but they they were a bit more challenging in the beginning. Now they're becoming a little bit more available. They Many of those types of experience have 
have at least for the time being been mostly virtual, um, but there still have been some ex uh, opportunities to do that. And things are opening up a little bit more as people continue to get vaccinated and we're kind of hopefully moving in a more positive direction here that, um, well, negative cases, but more positive just overall as a society. <laughs> um, so we, we hope that um, more in-person sort of research opportunities will become available. Um, as far as other clinical experiences, pre-health advisors across the country actually have really come together. We've put together some really great resources for students. Um, there's a whole kind of like Google doc um, available for students to look for different types of service opportunities. One of the things that we have been really encouraging applicants to do is to kind of focus on how can they um, provide service, community service during this time. It's really important for those of you who are interested in the health profession. You say you want to help people, they want to see you helping people. And it doesn't have to be in person, it can be virtual. So we've seen a shift in sort of the focus from some of the clinical and research to more service kind of focus. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities to do that. BU's Community Service Center has a lot of really great programs available still in a virtual format, providing services like um, free tutoring services for some of the uh, Boston public schools and things like that. So BU as a community has a, a lot of great opportunities and there are still a lot of great opportunities in the local area. For example, we've had some students volunteer at like the Greater Boston Food Bank and things like that. So, um, you know, other students have, you know, uh, sewed masks, like whatever. Our students get really creative um, and and it has had an impact and it's been draining for everyone, but I think that there's still been a lot to offer and that has to do with being in a city like Boston um, that is, is so great and we just want to come together as a community and help each other in any way we can. Um, as for the College of Engineering and, and having their, uh, are there uh, research opportunities for our students? Um, much in the same way, when, when the pandemic first started and everything was shut down, everything was shut down. Uh, but as things, uh, as we started to figure out how we operate um, in, in this world and labs began to reopen, research opportunities began to reopen to students as well. Um, we figured out how to do things remotely. So if people could do work in, in um in labs if they could do data crunching and things like that from from home there were positions for students there um and then as we started to figure out how to safely distance in professional spaces um students began to be welcome back it's not quite as robust as it would be like pre pre-pandemic times but it's there and i know that things are are opening up even more i know students who have already gotten research positions and internships for this summer so so things are getting better um and there are, there's there's definitely spaces for people to not just be in the classroom but to be in the lab and and, and doing like new research and and publishing papers and things like that um ongoing and I, and i think that as we as we as we see some sunlight on the horizon like it's it's only going to get better so um so there's opportunity coming for all the all the new students as we as we come in to next semester and next year and then onward thank you so much uh, to you both for for that uh, for those responses um i just think that uh, this speaks so uh, so well for the creativity of our students uh, as, as Michelle uh, referred to uh, and just the robustness of our uh, the sturdiness even of our uh, uh, the opportunities that we're able to provide so really appreciate that I really appreciate uh, both of you uh, joining us uh, for this panel uh, uh, today to uh, share your experiences and uh, to you know answer uh, some really good questions for uh, the students that have joined us today uh, to wrap things up, I have a couple of tiny pieces of housekeeping here. Um, first, uh, financial assistance, a uh, good uh, topic for everyone uh, to know about. Uh, now, uh, this, uh, you know, our um, decision release is so recent that uh, my slide is out of date. Um, in fact, uh, uh, we are now offering upwards of $325 million in undergraduate funding. Uh, make sure you fill out both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Definitely check out bu.edu uh, for financial aid deadlines. And finally, 
any next steps? Uh, I would encourage you to uh, screenshot this uh, particular screen here or check the recording later. Uh, just a good source of information for following us on social media, reaching out to our students at visit at bu.edu, getting in touch with members of our board of admissions at admissions at bu.edu or uh, intedmiss at bu.edu for uh, our um, international students uh, and uh, just a lot of information about uh, visiting us uh, at virtual events as well. Thank you all so much uh, for joining us tonight. Really appreciate you coming out and spending some time with us. Thank you very much, Boston University. That was an awesome presentation. Um, thank you those joining us. As you close out, you'll have an opportunity for a quick four question survey. So we do hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. Sign up for more sessions. There's still two more hours to hear from great institutions. And again, this was recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash C-A-C-H-E-T. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.